Hello, my name is Sue Carter and my colleague Bill Fisher and I would like to show you how we make these award-winning dipped candles. Seen here burning brightly in the candlestick trophy from the National Honey Show, which Bill won in 2014. The first thing you need to do is gather everything you need to make the candles. You will need something to keep your wax hot while you're dipping the candles. Here we have a water jacket which has been converted from a butcher's knife sterilising block, but you could easily use a burko boiler or a deep pan depending upon the size of your dipping tube. You will, of course, also need a dipping tube. These are commercially available from most of the beekeeping supply stores. You will need a way of keeping your wax molten but you need to make sure you don't overheat it, otherwise it'll darken. We have a thermostat control system which will keep the water jackets surrounding the wax at 73 degrees. You don't need anything so sophisticated. You can use a simple on-off switch, but you will need a thermometer to make sure you don't overheat the wax. Not surprisingly, you're going to need a lot of wax. You need enough for your dipping tube, plus enough for the weight of the candles that you're going to make. This wax needs to be melted and kept hot during the duration of the candle making process. For the system we use, we need three kilos of wax for the dipping tube. And we make 10 candles at a time, each one weighing 115 grams. So that's another 1.15 kilos of wax. So it's quite a lot more wax than you might think you need just to make a few candles. You'll need candle wick. Make sure you use square braided wick, which is specially designed for beeswax. We use a size 4 or 5 for the candles we make, which have a base diameter of around about 2.5 centimetres. You'll need two sheets of glass. We use these to roll the candles between to keep the sides straight and the surface smooth. Not surprisingly, they're called rolling glasses. You'll also need scissors for trimming the wick, a sharp knife for trimming the candle, and a small pot for putting pieces of wax that you trim off. You'll need somewhere to hang the candles between each dip. This is to allow the wax to harden slightly before you go on with the next round of dipping. We use a wooden frame with hooks on it. We attach rings to the end of the wick and we use these rings to hold on to as we're doing the dipping. You need to hang on your frame as many pieces of wick as candles you want to make. It's a good idea to add a couple extra, just in case you make a mistake. The wick then needs to be trimmed to length. It's a couple of inches longer than your dipping tube. Now we've got everything assembled, we're ready to start. Take a few of your wicks, probably no more than three or four, and submerse them in the hot wax in the dipping tube. After a few seconds, you'll see air bubbles starting to rise to the surface. Leave the wick submerged until these bubbles have stopped. This is an important part of priming the wick for all candle making processes. It stops the spluttering when the candle is eventually lit. Take the wicks out and let any wax strips fall back into the dipping tube. Once you've got your wicks primed and hanging up, and while they're still warm, run your fingers down each one in turn, removing any wax strips, particularly those that are formed at the bottom, and give each one a firm pull to straighten it. Now you've got your wick straightened, it's time to dip each in turn into the wax. The important thing here is a smooth action. You need to take the same time to dip the candles in as it takes you to take the candle out. Just touch the bottom gently. So it's put it in, touch the bottom, take it out. Once you've done all the candles, you begin again. So starting from the first one that you did, 
we dip it again, same sort of process, slowly in, touch the bottom, slowly out, with a regular movement. After about four or five dips, you'll need to roll the candle. The purpose of this is to make sure the candle's straight and the sides are smooth. Place the first candle you made between the two panes of glass and apply some gentle pressure, gently rolling all of the time to make sure that the candle is round and the sides are smooth. The next thing you need to do is to make sure that the bottom of the candle doesn't have too much wax drip on it. So go along the line and gently pinch off the bottom of the candle up to the level of the wick. Now you can start dipping again. You will find now, as your candle's getting bigger, that the level of wax in your dipping tank starts to drop. This you need to top up regularly from your supply of hot wax. You'll also need to make sure that you trim the bottom of your candles each time to make sure that the drips of wax don't become too big. After you've finished another four or five dips of your candles, you need to roll them again. You will find that small drips have come down the side and by gentle rolling you can get these out. Make sure that the candle's not too hot, otherwise the wax will stick to the glass. And make sure you don't apply too much pressure, otherwise you'll delaminate the candle. Now you're ready to start your third round of dips. Remember to keep the wax topped up as the candle's getting bigger. Remember to keep the same rhythmical movement and remember to take the drip off the bottom of the candle after you've hung it up to make sure that the bottom of the candle stays flat. If you don't remove the drips from the bottom of the candle, you'll find that the candle starts to get longer. So when you make your dip into the tank and touch the bottom, you'll find that the wax isn't actually covering the top of the candle anymore. Continue dipping. You'll find as the candle gets bigger that you may need to top up the wax almost every time you've made a dip. Make sure you keep the same rhythmical movements and that you remove the drip from the bottom of the candle. Continue for about 20 to 25 dips or until the candle is almost the size you would really like it to be. When your candle has almost reached the size that you want it to be, make one final roll of it and then a final dip. Don't be tempted to keep dipping to get a better surface to it. You'll only end up with a candle that's got an imbalanced shape. One of the last things you need to do is trim the base of the candle. It is important to do this while the candle is still warm, but remember, until the candle is completely hardened, it's still fragile. Place your candle gently on the rolling glass. Take your knife and whilst rolling the candle slowly, apply gentle pressure with the knife until a disc of wax has been cut off. You need to be very careful, otherwise the wax can be damaged. Under no circumstances be attempted to make a soaring motion. This will definitely damage the base. Leave your candles hanging where they are. Don't do anything with them for at least 24 hours to make sure that the wax has completely set. The last thing you need to do before you can light your candle is to trim the wick. You need to cut it at a slight angle and the height of it needs to be about the depth of your thumb. Don't cut it too short, otherwise it'll be difficult to light. Finally, you get to the moment you've been waiting for. You can light the candle. Appreciate the fact that it doesn't smoke, and best of all, you have the delicate aroma of the beeswax. We hope you have enjoyed our short video and that we have inspired you to have a go at making your own dipped candles. Maybe in 2016 you'll be the proud winner of the National Honey Show Candlestick Trophy. Thank you for watching.